Yeah, danger is my assignment. This time it's a street in Rome. There's a new dictatorship movement shaping up in various parts of Europe. The power behind it is none other than our old thorn in the side, Armin Ratka, international heel. Three days ago, his stooge Trigo, figurehead of the party, was murdered and the frames being tried on us for size. But now we've got a break. An agent named Vittorio Fabri is ready to talk. That's why I'm here in Rome. Close enough. What do you want? I'm Steve Mitchell. Get out. What? You heard me. I said get out. Well, Buster, I've come a long way for this little chat. You sent word you had information that would get us off the hook on this Trigo murder. You are very clever, aren't you? <laughs> if it's credentials you want. Credentials mean nothing. Now get out. Are you holding a gun on me by any chance? Yes. Do not force me to use it. Look, I don't get it. I have already talked to the real Steve Mitchell a half hour ago. What? <laughs> That's impossible. I'm Steve Mitchell. I just got here right on time. Yes? No, Rutka. I've already told you I have nothing to say to you. That was Rutka on the phone? Look, we think he's the boy behind all this. Now, if you're afraid of him, we can arrange protection. I told you I have already talked to Steve Mitchell. But he was an imposter. If you are not out of here by the count of three, you will have to be carried out. One. But two. Okay. Okay. Well, this is just dandy. Somebody's beaten me to the points with Fabry, but that gun in his pocket is a lot more convincing than my arguments. That phone call from Rotka shows me his hands in the deal for sure. Maybe he's the boy I should talk to. Shotgun in the face at close range is never a pretty sight. Whoever the killer was, he got away fast, and it looks like I'll never know what was on Fabry's mind now. Hello, give me the police. Oh, uh, Polizza? Polizza? the following. Item A. The corpse of one Vittorio Fabri, shot in the face at close range with a shotgun, approximately 320, according to your estimate. Item B. The tiny bits of glass found on the floor. Item C. Look, Lieutenant Umberto, before we go all the way through the alphabet, don't you think we ought to be sure that the corpse actually is Vittorio Fabri? Item C. Identification. According to Vittorio Fabri's papers, he has a wife in the city. I shall call his wife to identify him. Signora Fabri, now that you have seen the body, but the face is beyond recognition, you are positive it was Vittorio, your husband? Si. The little finger of the left hand is missing. Vittorio had an accident two years ago. And the birthmark on the right arm. Si. It is a Vittorio. Mrs. Fabry, when I was talking with your husband, he had a telephone call from a man named Armand Rotka. Can you tell me anything about him? Only that he has had dealings with him in the past. I, I do not know the nature of them. Would you mind telling us where you were this afternoon? I know. I was at home. Well, where were you when I was talking with your husband then? 
that house where you talked to Vittorio. It is not our home. I do not know what he was doing there. Uh, Signora, who owns that house? I have no idea. I see. Oh, these are your husband's effects. You may take them with you. <laughs> Wait, where is his wristwatch? Wristwatch? It is missing. Uh, speaking of missing articles, I don't uh, see any gun there. When I was talking with your husband, he held a gun on me in his pocket. Uh, his killer must have disarmed him. As for the watch, Signora, when we find it, you will be notified. And now, Signora, you may go. Uh, you have been most cooperative. You gentlemen have been most kind. Arrivederci. Arrivederci, Signora. And now, now we are confronted with item, uh, item... I think you've gotten to about item D. Grazie, Signor. Item D. A question. Why does Signora Fabri lie? Lie? About what? The house in question belonged to a young lady named Marie Picard. This I have found out, and more. Vittorio Fabri was involved with this Marie Picard, and yet more. Signora Carla Fabri knew about all this. Mrs. Fabry has the motive. This Marie Picard, the girl that owns the house, she could have a motive too. Did you check up on her whereabouts this afternoon? But of course. She went to a matinee at Alone? the theater. No, 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 no. In the company of one Armin Ratka. That name again. You know, Lieutenant, I don't think this case is going to be so tough after all. You are still convinced that Armin Ratka had something to do with it? More than ever. You have any idea where he's staying? The Hotel Chelly. And Charlie. by coincidence, there are cabs waiting in front of the police station. Ah, uh -huh. good. Hotel Chelly. Okay. I'm going to have a little talk with Ratka. You can list him under item X. Cab, senor. Cab. Angelo at your service. Step in, please. Yeah. Hotel Chelly. Call? Hotel Chelly. Chelly? Okay, see. Si. You want to settle? Sure. Hold tight. We go. Excuse, senor. I don't drive it so long. <laughs> oh, fine. No. Uh, always I push it the gondola in Venice. Why'd you make the switch? I lost my gondola. Lost it. <laughs> Brother, you must be absent-minded. Oh, no. Not absent mind, senor. Just optimistic. Optimistic? See, si. I roll the dice. I know I'm going to get a seven. <laughs> I better my gondola. Huh? No seven. <laughs> uh, excuse please, sir. I know some places you might find to your amuse. <laughs> no sale. I got a little business to attend to. Now we are turning into the Via delle Quarto Fanfare. Look, will you skip the grand tour and just concentrate on getting me to the Hotel Chelly? Chelly? Chelly. Si. As you wish, senor. Well, well, my old and dear friend Mitchell. Well, Ratka, do come in. My, but it has been a long time. Four years ago in Istanbul. Yes, of course, a most pleasant memory. Not for me. If I remember right, I came off second best. But I'm glad to see that you are feeling more civil tonight. What do you mean? Well, when I passed you on the street this noon and spoke to you, you would not even turn around. You didn't pass me on the street this noon. I didn't get in until afternoon. Oh, but I could swear it was you that I saw. Uh, won't you sit down, Mitchell? You know, this story of some guy impersonating me, if it only came from you, I wouldn't believe it. But the dead man said the same thing. The dead man? Vittorio Fabri. He was killed at approximately 3.20 this afternoon. Or maybe that isn't news to you. <laughs> of course not. I killed him. You? Give me that again. Well, to be sure, I'll explain to you exactly how it happened. You see, it was an affair of honor. 
He insulted a young lady friend of my acquaintance. So I slapped his face with my gloves and demanded immediate satisfaction. Now look funny, boy. Oh, but I assure you this is all very serious. So we agreed to a duel without seconds. It was quite a match, but evidently my skill was too much for him. So, you see, I ran him through. Oh, it was horrible. I was covered with remorse. You better take it easy. You know, when I was in public school 22, I was mumbledy tight champion. Touche. You're a real cute kid now, Ratka. But the point is, I think maybe you could have killed Fabry. But haven't I just got through telling you? I did. The duel. A duel with shotguns at close range, maybe. But I have even supplied you with a motive. It was an affair of honor. Yeah. I was thinking of another motive. You see, Fabry was all set to spill about the Trigo killing of a couple of weeks ago. Now, maybe these two killings could have something to do with each other. I guess I must confess to Trigo's killing also. Did you bring the handcuffs with you, Mitchell? I stand in awe before the brilliance of your deduction. There'll be time enough for the handcuffs when I get some evidence. Ah, yes, evidence. That is something else again. So we're going to quit playing games, huh? OK. I understand you were at the theater this afternoon. True. Very mediocre performance, incidentally. What time did you arrive? At three. You took a young lady named uh, Marie Picard? Such a lovely creature. Mm. Then you were at the theater after three o'clock all afternoon? Yes. Oh, this poses something of stumbling block to you, I imagine. Yeah, it's a pretty convenient alibi. Maybe I better have a talk with this Miss Picard. Yes, she should be at her house at this time. Uh, 214 Via Rienzi. I know the address. I was there this afternoon talking to Fabry, remember? I am completely at your disposal. I still think you're my boy. I'm going to bust my back to prove it. All the very best of luck to you, Mitchell. Hello, Marie. This is Amin. You are about to have a visitor. Yes, Steve Mitchell. He's going to ask you some questions about this afternoon. What? Tell him the truth, of course. Goodbye. Miss Picard? Yes. My name is Steve Mitchell. Oh, uh, yes, come in, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ratka just called. I was expecting him. Oh, I see. Sit down. Thank you. I uh, wanted to talk to you about the killing that took place here this afternoon. Why are you staring at me like that? Do I look familiar to you, too? So far, just about everybody I've talked to in Rome claim that they've seen somebody that looks like me roaming around. Well, I'm sure I'd remember seeing you. You went to the theater with Amon Ratka this afternoon. You arrived there about 3 o'clock? That's true. Did uh, Mr. Rotka leave the theater during the performance? No. How about you? No. What was Fabre doing in your house this afternoon? He was a friend of mine. I let him use the house occasionally for his business transactions. How far is the theater from here? Oh, two or three minutes. And if you and Rotka arrived at the theater at 3 o'clock, you must have left here just a few minutes before. Now, I arrived here about 10 minutes later, and... Yeah, but we uh, did not leave from here. Oh? Uh, no, Ratka wished me to wear a new hat to the theater, but he wanted me to pick it out myself. So he gave me the money to go shopping, and I met him at the theater at 3. Did he arrive on time? Yes. By your watch? By mine. And by the clock in the foyer. That doesn't help much. I talked with Fabry here about a quarter past three. He was killed a 
few minutes later. You're sure Rotka didn't leave the theater? But I've already told you he didn't. You and Rotka are trying to cover up for each other. You're not being very smart. Your alibi can be checked, you know. Why don't you check it? Don't worry, I will. Only, uh, don't take too long. The quicker you do, the sooner I may be able to see you again. Perhaps. I'll see you around. I'll be around. I got one more crack at Maratka. And what is that? It may be that. Scarlatti, the theater manager. I asked him to meet me here. I see. Come in. Signor Mitchum? That's right. Mr. I am Scarlatti? Dino Scarlatti, manager of the theater. This is Lieutenant Umberto. How do you do? Buongiorno. Want to be seated? Grazie. Well, Mr. Scarlatti, what did you find out? Immediately after your telephone call, I questioned my doorman and uh, one of my attendants, as you requested. Go on. Signor Radka and Signorina Picard entered the theater at the precisely three o'clock. Radka attends regularly. The doorman recognized him. Did they leave their seats at any time during the performance? According to my attendant, Radka, a few minutes later, came up to him and asked the location of the telephone. The attendant directed him to one in the foyer, where Radka made a brief call. That must have been the call that Fabry received while I was talking to him. Radka then returned to his seat, where he and the signorina remained for the rest of the performance. Well, I guess that does it. It does? I'll skip it. Thank you anyway, Mr. Scarlatti. I hope I have helped you. Matter of fact, you haven't. But thanks anyhow. Yes. Good night, gentlemen. Arrivederci. Good night. Well, Mitchell? Well, Lieutenant, I guess I'm licked. And you can file that under item Z. Good night. Good night. Hello, senor. It's me, Angelo. No kidding. Can't you get anybody to ride in your cab with me, Angelo? Oh, sure, senor. But out of you, I'm going to make a career. You go here, there, here, all over Rome. Duck, 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 zip, zip, zip. Yeah, but right now I'm pretty well zipped out. You wish for me to take you somewhere, someplace? Yeah. Where to, senor? The Hotel Chile. But this time, no grand tour and no songs. Just steer. See, si, senor. Well, 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 I'm happy to see you back so soon. Yeah. I'll bet you are. And how have you been doing? Lousy. Tried every way I could to break down your alibi, but no soap. But don't you see how everything turns out for the best? If I were to tell you that I was innocent, you would not believe me. But this way, finding out for yourself... I still don't believe you. Dear, dear, do you wish me to confess all over again? Excuse me, please. Hello? No, I do not want you to come to my room. I'm not interested in purchasing a new automobile. He's salesman. Such a boy, so persistent. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll be running along, Ratka. It's too bad you had to come off second best again, Mitchell. Yeah. You've won another round, but you know something? It only takes one punch to score a knockout. One of these days, I'm going to find that punch. Desk. The man that just called me from the lobby. Has he gone? He has left. Thank you. Hey! It can't be. 
cannot be. What's the matter, Angelo? Didn't I tell you to wait for me? I tell you, senor, it cannot be. It's impossible. What's impossible? You came out of the hotel one minute ago. You changed your clothes, but I know it's you. What? Hey, that guy that's been impersonating me again. Wait a minute. You say he came out of the hotel just a minute ago? Si, senor. I, I drive him away. Just a few minutes ago, Ratka had a telephone call from a guy he didn't want to see. Must be the same one. Looks like I'm getting a break just about time. I don't understand it, senor. You don't have to understand it. You just take me where you took him. Take you where you want to go, senor, but I don't think you're going to like it. Why not? Hey, it's just an old pier down by the river, short the way from here. Maybe that's where he's hiding out. You still want to go? Yeah, don't worry. I'm going to like it fine. This the place? This is the place. I thought you were dead. Wait a minute, I get it. The real Vittorio Fabri is dead, isn't he? Yes, but I did not kill him. I was hired to pretend to be Fabri and to talk to you. That is all I did. That is all I had to do. That and to remove Fabri's wristwatch, which was broken. <laughs> Surprised to see me alive after that trap you set for me with your pal, huh? Please, I, I don't know what you talk. After that story you see in somebody that looks like me, that ties you into the deal. I tell you, I don't understand. Maybe Lieutenant Umberto will. Let's go. Stay where you are. Don't move. Drop it. So, Ratka, you are my boy after all, huh? Well, that's a quaint way of putting it. The whole deal fell into place the minute I saw your stooge. You played it pretty sharp, Ratka. You killed the real Fabry, and then headed for the theater. True. I got the Fabry's about 3.15. Your stooge put on his act and gave me that phony story about the real Steve Mitchell, just to throw me off the track when he wouldn't give me the information I came for. And when I left, he pulled out that dead man's foot, blasted his face off and beat it, and I fell for the whole deal. Well, Mitchell, looks like you come out second best again, huh? Ratka, why don't you get rid of him? With a great deal of pleasure. Ah, Senor Mitchell, I was just finishing my report. But I am lacking only one item. Item Y. What's that? Why did Ratka kill Fabri? Because Fabry knew that Rotka had killed Trigo, his figurehead, and was about to spill to it. Of course. Which brings us to item Z, the end. Yeah, I guess you can file that if you've got room for it. You know, Lieutenant, when I get home, I'm going to send you a present. I think you'll love it. Oh, a new filing case. No, a case of alphabet soup. So long, Lieutenant. Arrivederci. 